Welcome to another episode of Supernatural Scotland, the podcast. I am your host, Mark Smith. Huge thank you again to my listeners for your continued support. Just a heads up, I'm now on TikTok as well, so please follow me on there. And I'm still on YouTube and Facebook. If there are any stories you wish to hear more about, please let me know and I will do some research or possibly even visit it for YouTube or TikTok. Scotland is home to many friendly people and it has a lot of culture and beautiful locations to visit. It also has many haunted areas all over, whether you pick a more picturesque visit or a city break. Hopefully these podcasts will help you decide where you would like to visit. This week I am kicking off with Scale House, which is a 17th century mansion in Orkney, overlooking the Bay of Scale. This area has a very long history. During a storm, In 1850, a settlement was uncovered, and this was from between 3000 BC and 2500 BC, making it older than Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids of Egypt. It also has been occupied by Vikings in the past. The latest Laird, along with his dog, has overheard footsteps late at night as well as seeing a few strange things and other odd noises. An ancient burial ground was also discovered right underneath the floorboards of the house. After they carbon dated and confirmed these to be ancient, they were left to their eternal rest and the floorboards were replaced. Some say that odd noises and footsteps belong to a certain ghost. This was Ube. He built a small island in the middle of the loch by rowing out many years ago and dropping stones until a wee island was created. It is said he died on one of his trips to the small island and now his spirit haunts the house he loved and occupied until his death. Staff have reported seeing a reflection of a man in the shop, but when they checked, no one was there. The man has been seen by many staff and tourists in the property. It was claimed he was a tall man with balding dark hair. The whole house was searched from top to bottom to make sure no one was wandering its halls. No one was found. Another tourist had spoken with a male member of staff in the gun room, only to discover no male members of staff were working on that day. So who did they speak to? One tourist claimed to feel someone sitting on the corner of his bed. He jumped out of bed when he seen a figure sitting on it. But when he jumped up, the ghostly figure disappeared quickly into thin air. I suspect he did not sleep the rest of the night. One day staff were standing in the courtyard when they noticed a woman in one of the apartments wearing a shawl over her head. They did not think much about it until later when they found out all the guests had checked out. This place does appear to have a lot of ghostly activity and this could be down to how old it is. Fancy a visit? Our second location is Glamis Castle. It has been around for over 600 years. There are claims this is the most haunted castle in Scotland. This castle is in a stunning location surrounded by the Grampian Mountains. This could be a castle from a fantasy movie with its towers and mysterious rooms. Much of the castle was rebuilt in the 17th century and this gives it a French chateau look. In the early 20th century, it was the childhood home of the Queen Mother. 
It is haunted by a young page boy who haunts the Queen Mother's sitting room. He was a mischievous boy who got into a lot of trouble for his pranks. They would make him sit on a stone seat to think about the things he had done. One tragic winter night, he was again sitting on the stone. When everyone had went to bed and forgot about the boy. On the one occasion he actually listened, he stayed sat here all night and was sadly found frozen to death. This has not stopped his mischievous behaviour, and he still enjoys the odd prank. He is especially known for trying to trip up unsuspecting tourists entering the room. Another ghost haunts the crypt, which can be entered through a connecting door from the dining room. One of the most interesting and exciting rooms in the whole castle is a secret chamber. A Lord of Glamis was playing cards with the Earl of Crawford and refused to give up on the game even as the Sabbath was nearing. When the clock struck midnight, the devil appeared and joined the game. It would seem the devil likes to play cards as he was also said to play poker with Tam Daliel at the House of Bins. The Lord of Glamis, then not knowing when to quit, gambled his soul away. It was shortly after the game he perished. It is said you can hear the echoes of someone shouting and swearing in the room at night. They bricked up the room to stop this, but his ghost roams the castle during the night. Guests have awoken during the night with him standing over their beds staring at them with an evil glint in his eye. The castle is haunted by the Grey Lady, who is said to be the ghost of Janet Douglas, the wife of John VI, Lord of Glamis. King James V was not fond of the Douglas clan, as he had a horrible experience with some of the Douglas clan. When her husband died, she remarried Archibald Campbell of Skipness, and they lived at Glamis. The king had her arrested for witchcraft. On July the 17th, 1537, she was taken from Edinburgh Castle and burned at the stake on Castle Hill. Her ghost is seen in the chapel, silently praying. People know she is a ghost due to disappearing in front of the visitor's eyes. In my opinion, the most terrifying to see is the woman without a tongue. This ghost wanders the grounds, and when you see her, she points to her terribly disfigured face. No one knows who this poor ghost is, or what happened to her. It's time for our creature feature. Our first creature is the Fajin. Probably the most bizarre creature of Scottish folklore, the Fajin is a large monster or giant which has one eye in the middle of its face, a lot like a cyclops. Makes me wonder if it's a distant relation. What makes this creature really bizarre is the fact it only has one large hand and this is in the centre of its torso. It also has one single leg again in the centre of its bottom half, and it hops about on this one leg. Don't let this fool you, it is said to have great agility on its one leg. It usually carries a spiked club and uses this to defend itself or attack travellers who happen to see it. As this creature was born with unlucky features, it hates all other life and will go out its way to make others suffer. It will destroy whole farms, and it is said to be able to do so in one day. 
This creature does not hibernate, so can cause chaos all year round. So be careful where you travel, as you do not want to run into the Fajan. Our second creature of this episode is the Trow. A Trow is an evil or very mischievous fairy or spirit from the Orkney and Shetland Islands. They can appear either very short or as a huge monster. These creatures are nocturnal and the layer of the trow is usually a large mound of earth. They do love music and have often kidnapped an unsuspecting musician to their dens to play them music. A trow is considered bad luck so our Scottish ancestors would not mention or discuss trows in case this brought them bad luck. In folklore, it's also claimed they can have more than one head and some say they are very much like a troll. You could say this is Scotland's version of the troll. Unlike a troll, if he does not return home by sunrise, he will not turn into stone, but he cannot enter his lair during the sunlight hours and must wait and hide until night time returns. Now I mentioned them kidnapping musicians. They say a brief stay can cause many years to pass in the real world and the poor musicians sometimes turn to dust or die. In a video on my YouTube channel I mentioned fairies in my Blair Athol video where a man stops by a cave to listen to music and when he returns a year has passed. I have also in a previous podcast mentioned the ghost piper of Clanyard Bay where the piper disappeared into the fairies caves and you can still hear him playing underground today. Perhaps there is something to be said for this theory. Fairies of all sorts have been a massive part of Scottish folklore So be careful playing music out in the countryside at night and be wary of caves as you do not know how much time may pass. And that is the end of this episode. Thanks again for listening. Goodbye.